Hi! This time I'm going to talk about how you can play a solo role-playing game or a co-op role-playing game that is without a game master in a simple or complex way or perhaps somewhere in between in a semi-complex way. I'm going to tell you how you can identify those moments in which you can you want to keep things simple or when you want a bit more depth, more complexity to different aspects of or elements of the session. To do this, I am going to use a PDF as a reference or aid for this explanation. And I want to apologize beforehand if the video image gets a bit choppy or it stutters a bit uh, throughout this explanation, because when I go through PDFs using my computer, sometimes the image uh, can get a bit stuttery although the sound will work fine. So the document that I am going to use is the Tricube Tales Solo Rules. I'm going to put a link in the description below to this document. Mm. It's available for free. Well, they're basically uh, offering it for a small price, but if you click the, um, the preview image as explained by the author, you can pretty much download the two pages of the emulator and there's not going to be like a watermark or some sort of like a huge sample text crossing the, the middle of the document. I find it quite odd that some, in some cases, some um, RPG designers tell you you can get the document for free and they still leave the sample uh, across the page. So that seems a bit awkward or, or strange because you could, if you wanted to offer it for free or as pay what you want, you set it up as pay what you want in Drive Through RPG and problem solved. But uh, don't worry about this Tricube Tales document. The author gives you the entire thing to, so you can try it. And if you like it, maybe you want to um, support the author by paying the small uh, price for this document. So in Tricube Tales, I chose this emulator because it contains everything that you need to run a solo RPG although I think it could have begun sorry it could have gone deeper in some areas but we will get in, into that in a few moments but it's pretty complete in my opinion so when it comes to these Tricube Tales solo rules they give you the basics on how you can play a solo RPG they tell you that you can ask simple questions that require a yes or a no. So I wanted to uh, use a small scenario so that we can follow the process as I give explanations on when to keep things simple or add a bit more complexity or depth. So let's say that you wanted to play a typical fantasy role-playing game to keep things quite... Um, familiar to most players out there. Maybe you have created a rogue, a character by the name of Tomcat, because Tomcat is a, a burglar sort of character, but even though he's quite stealthy and agile, he's somewhat, uh, somewhat thick, somewhat burly, so he kind of looks like a Tomcat. And in this adventure, let's say that people in the village of gloom mist have gone missing three or four people have disappeared in the course of two weeks and now a small child by the name of billy has also disappeared so a search party was formed to look through the surrounding areas through the woods and tomcat decided to form to be a part of this search party maybe because he he's a good person or maybe he is looking for some sort of reward maybe it's both of those reasons so he's part of this search party and they decided to split up because sorry split up mm, because maybe something happens to this small kid like i said maybe let, let's call him timmy timmy okay so little timmy <laughs> disappeared and Tomcat decided to uh, go on his way on a particular route that he think Timmy went through. Now, this starting scene, maybe you, you came up with it on your own, spontaneously, like I did. I just thought about it right now. Maybe <laughs> some uh, things about it are a bit cliche, but it's something that just came into my mind. 
I'm going to put a link in the description to a video where I talk about how you can improvise different things in solo role-playing games. Or maybe using your RPG Dream Journal, I'm also going to put a link to that in the description. So, like I said, mm, his name was Timmy, right? Okay, so <laughs> Top Cat is looking for Timmy. See, he goes in, into this particular direction, uh, through the woods, and he starts yelling, Timmy, come out, Timmy, we are looking for you. And suddenly he reaches this area with what appears to be an abandoned cabin in the woods. It looks like quite old and it needs repair badly. So Tomcat starts to say, Timmy, are you there? Is there someone home? He starts to um, yell to try to find out if there's someone there in the cabin, but there is no reply, no answer. And all of this has been kept quite simple. Everything, we have created it on the fly, but if you wanted more depth, you could have generated the entire thing using your different tables and generators and emulators, perhaps even using this Tricube Tales document to come up with some elements, some factors and variables. Maybe the entire scene changes altogether. If you needed inspiration, you could make some rolls to see if this starting scene has to do with some sort of uh, betrayal or related to some sort of disease or maybe uh, there is mistrust between different people and you want to work things out. The possibilities are, are endless. But in this case, like I said, we decided to keep things simple and we decided to improvise. So Tomcat approaches this cabin and he knocks on the door. There is still no answer. So depending on if you want to keep things simple or if you want to uh, create some challenges, you could ask a simple question like, is the door locked? So here you have uh, a way to determine that. You basically roll a d6 and if it is like very likely that the uh, answer is yes, you need to roll two or above. If it is likely, you need to roll three or above. If it is maybe, you need to roll four or, on, or sorry, uh, yes. If it is maybe, uh, you need to roll four or above. But if it's unlikely, you need five or above. And very unlikely, you need six. So you make your roll, perhaps the door is locked. Perhaps it is unlocked. If you wish to enter the cabin, being a burglar, you could perhaps try to pick the lock. Or maybe you want to force your way in because you're quite strong despite being a burglar. But let's say that the door is unlocked. So you open the door and you ask, is there someone inside? It's probably very... Uh, it's unlikely that there's someone inside because Tomcat was calling out to Timmy and saying if there's someone home and there was no reply so there's pr probably no one inside so that's the way you can determine that oh you only you will need to roll a six to get a yes answer you make your roll and there's no one inside so now you could add some sort of, of a variable or a complication to it here you have a mechanism for that. You can roll a d6. If you roll one or two, you add a but to your uh, answer. And if you roll a five or a six, you add an and. So maybe you determine that there's no one inside, but you obtained a but. So you, but, and you go to the <laughs> complex questions table. You make a roll and you get the result of technology. How does that apply? I immediately thought of a strange looking box with pieces of metal and wood placed on a table inside of the cabin. So there's no one inside but this mechanism that seems to be well kept, perhaps polished, it doesn't look like it's dusty or with cobwebs, it means that someone has been in this cabin before. The device could be as complex as you want it to be. Maybe it has some sort of many levers or buttons and switches. 
And this is where we can add more depth to this um, yes or no procedure. When you obtain technology, you could use some other tables or subtables, some other emulators, uh, random generation tables to determine the aspect and perhaps even the purpose of this uh, device or maybe it's some other, other thing related to technology. Maybe it's not a device, maybe you only see like some blueprints, technological blueprints or some books related to technology. All of that can be further developed with other oracles and tables. Or perhaps, like I said, with this same document of Tricube Tales by modifying different results. It's all about what you want. In my case, I immediately had that idea of a box with uh, switches and buttons and levers. So that's it. Just go for it. But what if we, we obtained and instead of but? So maybe the cabin is empty but we made another roll for the complex uh, uh, result and we obtained, let's say, rejection. So not only is this place uh, without anyone inside, there is there are no, no furniture whatsoever, no, no, sorry, no furniture whatsoever, no objects, no tools, nothing, not even like plates or uh, dishes and um, not a single indication that there's someone here, or that someone has lived here. So this adds more depth to things. You could think, well, the cabin is completely empty. There's no one inside. Maybe you want to make some skill checks or rolls to see if there are some further clues. Maybe you want to look for a secret. Maybe there is like a trapdoor or something. But that is all up to you. And if you wanted to expand on this mm, empty cabin, some other thing, perhaps there is some strange smell or some sound of dripping somewhere in the cabin. All of this, like I said, you could improvise it or you could use some other tables, some other tools. Ah, uh, yes, I, was, I almost forgot about it. Please check out the uh, link in the description below where I talk about the three engines to run any solo role-playing game. In this case, we are using the Tricube Tales as our primary engine. And maybe this is the only thing that you need, but if you want more information, how to, you can expand the different factors and elements within this session. Mm, you, you definitely want to add a secondary or even a tertiary engine. So here in this document, you have information on how to scale questions like uh, how far away something is, how long is it. You basically roll a d6 to determine a scale. Maybe if you want to determine how big something is, one is very little, six is quite large, and three is somewhere in the middle. Sorry, in the middle. Mm. But if you wanted like more extreme results, some weighted results, if a scale question is asked, um, you roll two or three dice, three six-sided dice, and you use the highest or the lowest result of, the, of what you rolled. So this document is quite complete, and as you can see, we can go from uh, simplicity to complexity quite easily, or somewhere in between. Like I said, maybe the starting scene, you just wanted to improvise and go for the first scene that you thought of. Maybe you remembered a comic book or a movie or a novel, and it came out as a sort of inspiration from that scene that you read or that you watched, but you could have generated every single element from that opening scene. As I explained in my uh, improvisation video, it's all about the ease of a flow of your mind, surprising yourself without you even noticing. Suddenly, all of these ideas start to to flow from your mind, just go with them. But if you get a bit stuck, then use those emulators, those tables, those oracles to get the ball running again, the gears turning. You have a section here of general advice with some quick tips on how to create interesting solo adventures. 
Like, for example, they tell you, uh, in fact, I think I agree with many of the points of this author, that you can use your imagination to flesh out an opening scene, uh, when to use random tables, how to follow your initial instincts. In fact, I, I think we've, we think a lot alike. Uh, I agree with pretty much everything that the author explains in this document. How you can drive this story forward whenever possible. Um, don't ask too many questions over and over again. How to approach the adventure from the perspective of your character. And how to speak the story out loud or take notes. I definitely recommend that you uh, create a sort of journal with all of your solo RPGs not only to keep things in order because unlike uh, your typical session with your group the game master and the other uh, players are constantly helping you um, are constantly reminding you of what happened in the last session or the current details but when you are playing by yourself you need to keep track of things to, so that you don't uh, the adventure feels a bit more consistent and it's very inter entertaining for you to read through your notes, uh, to reminisce of those different adventures that you live. And if you are a dungeon master or game master, you can use your solo adventures as complete adventures for your group, just replacing your solo character with the things with the party of adventurers. The things are going to be uh, proceeding very differently, the different events and scenes and everything else. But now you have that that skeleton, that framework for the adventure. In this document, you also have information on story structure. Because an adventure with this document consists of between five to nine scenes, which you track using a standard deck of playing cards. It is up to you to decide when you're ready to proceed to the next scene of the story. For every scene, including the opening scene, you draw a card, you place it face up in front of you, and then you look it up on the random scenes table. So the very first scene, for example, what I talked about of the missing villagers and uh, the burglar or rogue looking for Timmy, you could have generated all of that using the random scenes, scenes table. Here you obtain different results, like perhaps the scene involves a standard crafty challenge. Maybe you want to, you need to create something with that starting scene. Or maybe the scene involves a standard brawny challenge. In this case, maybe opening that door, if it was locked, it could have been a brawny challenge. So this random scene table allows you to tie some challenge or objective to a particular scene. Now, there, here is where I think the document is slightly lacking. Maybe the author thought that many experienced players were going to be using this document, but someone who has never played a solo RPG before could think that this um, way of running a solo RPG is too, too much driven by separated events or scenes. Like, you have scene 1, this happens, you have scene 2, this happens, you have scene 3, and so on. But what if you wanted to play in a, an adventure site? If you wanted to go into some sort of dungeon or mansion or castle and here I think you need to uh, be creative when it comes to the random scenes that you obtain. So for example there is a um, result by drawing cards where you get a twist. It tells you to roll on a twist table and what is this twist table? Well there are several settings like mini RPG uh, games and settings at the same time that have been released to try uh, for Tricube, sorry, Tricube Tales. Some of them are free, some others are very affordable, like 50 cents if I remember correctly, and they are different uh, fantasy and science fiction and science fantasy uh, settings that also include like a very simple way of playing the RPG. I think they could be uh, potentially great tools for someone who has never played a role-playing game before, but in my case, and I think in the case of many others, they are probably going to be using this GM emulator to run their favorite systems. So in, those, in the case of those mini settings or mini RPGs, you have different uh, simple tables to determine what will happen next. And here I think you can add a bit more complexity to the session. Maybe you drew a card and you obtained this twist table result 
so now maybe you could make some quick rolls using these tables included in Treacube tales involving random people, random locations, random events. But if you wanted more complexity, then you bring out your deck of Game Master emulator cards, mm, or maybe Mythic again, or maybe some other tables to generate any sort of result that you feel is required uh, related to this uh, table outcome. Mm. Please check out the description because I am going to put many links that could help you in, in solving this uh, complexity issue the, related to videos and how to run solo RPGs, etc. So you have different challenges, like I told you, divided by scenes. So in my case, if I were to obtain a twist table result, I definitely would be adding that the adventure requires you to go into some sort of dangerous adventure site, dungeon or whatever. In the case of uh, Tomcat looking for lost Timmy, maybe he's inside the cabin and he may um, search for secret doors, looking for some sort of trap door and there was a trap door in the cabin and he opens it and it leaned, it, there you see like this set of steps, wooden steps going very deep into some unknown, very dark basement. I think that's the start, the entrance. Perhaps there is an entire uh, dungeon complex or some sort of lair under the cabin. Maybe there is some sort of monster or cultist or a group of, of whatever, slavers that are kidnapping people and they are keeping them trapped under the cabin. That's why the cabin is always empty. It's just like a facade, a way to deceive people, but it's actually the main entrance for this very dangerous area. So. I definitely recommend that you look at these random scenes results and if you see a result that um, could serve as an excuse to insert an adventure site that you use it right away. Some results like for example advanced main plot or advanced secondary plot, a primary subplot, mm, all of those could be excuses for this, uh, for uh, like an excuse to use to insert an adventure site into this adventure into this solo uh, plotline so it's all up to you or maybe you want to decide that by making a yes or no role so here you have all the information how to advance the plot and handle the different random scenes that you generate by drawing cards but you also have a way to conclude the session there are some players some solo players out there that have some uh, difficult time when trying to set an ending or a climax for their adventures. For some, it is logical based on the threads and the course of events to see how they are going to wrap things up. Like, oh, the, the, everything points to that uh, hidden temple in the jungle. That's probably the last um, encounter site, the, like the boss area where you're going to find the most dangerous enemies, the greatest treasures and artifacts and items. Maybe you can rescue a non-player character there or discover something and there's going to be an enemy boss, perhaps most likely. But for some others, uh, they could require some more structured or strict way to end the things. And here you have such an option. Each time you draw a card, you look at the spot cards, maybe between 2 to 10. It's your standard poker deck on the table and including the one that you just drew. If you have between three to four spot cards of one suit and two of another suit, this will be the final scene. But maybe if you ever reach five spot cards of the same suit, even if you have no other spot cards, then this is the final scene and it will have an epic twist. You're on the twist table or rather, if you're not using all of those mini settings that I mentioned, you uh, determine the outcome or the climactic flow in your own way, making your own roles, using your own tables, etc. And of course, if you win this final scene, that you, you win the adventure, you resolve the issue. So when it comes to determining random locations, random events, random people, related to the random scenes that you um, obtain in, uh, by using the deck of cards 
and the complex questions tables. You could use the simple results here. Oh, you needed to generate some random people. Maybe there was actually inside, there, there was someone in, inside the cabin. So maybe you make your role and there was a doctor slash herbalist, whatever you require. Because it's a cabin in the woods, a herbalist would be a better fit. But maybe you made another role and you, it resulted in reporter or town crier. Because it is a cabin in the woods, I think uh, perhaps a reporter would be a better choice because maybe it's someone investigating like those nosy reporters trying to um, create a story of what is going on, the disappearance of the village of the people around the village of gloom mist. Or maybe you find a soldier, maybe a soldier from another kingdom was wounded and he was taking shelter inside this cabin. So the results are endless and you can see all of that was just improvised, no further roles required. But if you obtain, for example, like I said, a herbalist or a soldier or a reporter, you could make a lot of roles to see if that non-player character has some sort of scar or what's the color of that person's hair, the eyes, um, is the body of the person, is that person quite robust or very thin perhaps? The products by Ken Wickham, I'm also going to put a, a link in the description below. They are perfect for those very minute details. If you want to add many, many small details to the encounter, those uh, tables are perfect. When it comes to random locations, you also have maybe th uh, there's some something close to the cabin. If Tomcat decided to explore around a bit before entering the cabin, maybe he finds a result of fire station slash tower. A tower would be a better fit for this fantasy setting. But maybe you obtain the result of police station. Maybe there is a, the, uh, another cabin belonging to a ranger. When it comes to random events generated by the uh, tables from the cards, or maybe it makes sense with the complex questions that you asked or the simple questions, Maybe there is a barking dog. Perhaps there is a dog barking underneath the cabin. That's how you find out that there is an entrance to some sort of underground lair. Or maybe you obtain the result of speeding vehicle. Maybe you are inside the cabin and suddenly you hear like perhaps a wagon or uh, a horse. It could be anything, uh, some, uh, depending on the setting, a chariot that you heard that was just being parked outside or maybe you obtained a uh, prowling vigilante maybe, maybe when you enter the cabin another adventurer came in and he's looking for the one responsible for the disappearance of these people maybe he thinks that you are responsible he found you inside the cabin so he thinks this guy inside this cabin in the middle of the woods it's quite suspicious and maybe you have to fight that vigilante or maybe you make some diplomacy, diplomacy or persuasion checks to convince that vigilante that you are on his side or maybe he's pretending to be a vigilante and he's actually one of the kidnappers so there is so much so much that you can work with when it comes to simplicity and complexity so i definitely recommend that you download this uh, or that you purchase the tricube tales uh, the uh, designer is very kind at letting us sample the uh, Tricube Tales uh, emulator to see if we like it or not. Definitely give it a go and consider supporting him. Mm. But I hope this explanation was clear enough on when you want to add complexity to things and when you want to keep things simple. If your mind suddenly just comes up with the idea, if you start to improvise in a uh, very smooth, easy, yes, effective way, then you don't need any other tables. But if you have that, that hunger, that drive to add more depth or complexity to the different results, go for it. Take, um, I'll watch my, my video of um, the three engines to run solo RPGs. It's going to give you some tips and advice on how you can add those extra emulators, oracles, tables. And if you have never played a solo RPG before, use, use the Tricube Tales document, solo rules. 
using my example as a sort of guideline to come up with your own ideas, encounters, quests, subquests. So I hope this video was informative or at the very least entertaining. And um, I would love to hear your thoughts on when you think it's better to make things a bit more complex or deep in solo RPGs or you want to keep things completely simple or like I said somewhere in between you make this encounter a bit more complex this other transition into another scene a bit more simple if you are adding an adventure site like I mentioned the haunted tower the um, caverns the subterranean labyrinth just underneath the lake that is definitely going to add complexity to the story so uh, thanks for watching this video and thank you so much to those of you that have been supporting the channel by sending right through rpg gift certificates if anyone else wants to further support the channel the information how to do that will be in the description below once again thank you and see you later